Hello. In this video, we're going to work on the portraits inside the Mid Journey and specifically take a photo reference, keep it all characteristic of face and creating the portraits inside the Mid Journey with the different settings. Example, right here we have some Steam Cyberpunk kind of backdrop replacement. You'll notice they're all same, change a little bit playing on the hair, changing this color, also change some little bit outfits as well. We'll try to also push as far as we can till face become less recognizable. So we see what ranges we need to stay with. And of course, work more on the backgrounds and change colors and outfits as well as we're going along. And of course, our main goal, be sure that our person face portraits will resemble the original image as close as this possible. To start work on the project, we need our original photo that we're going to reference that AI will be trained and use it because Mid Journey utilize Discord. So we're going to use it as well. Right on the bottom in the chat, you'll notice you have a plus symbol. Click on the plus and select upload file. Navigate to the file or portraits you want to use it and select. After selection, be sure you press enter. That will show this image was uploaded to your, on your server. Best way to verify this, if you go and click on the image and it will open in the preview. And this is actually what we needed because we need open one image open in preview, right click on a Windows it says copy image address. On a Mac, I think it just copy image. And this is how in Discord will go to reference. So let's go ahead and do next. We'll go tap imagine. And in the prompt, we paste the path to our image. This is a simplicity things we can do. And next, we're going to type. You can type, for example, um, so next what I want to do is actually preserve our rate show. And because I don't know at yet what is fully correct rate show of this image, I will just say, okay, let's do portraits for this. And we'll set two by three. This is the simplest way we can create image reference, um, portraits reference to our image that we uploaded. Okay, and here we have our first render. If we look on render, it does somewhat resemble some elements, but we lost our glasses, we lost some options. And this is okay for the basic, but you notice it is not come closer to what we wanted. So we have other options we can apply it. We can actually tell me journey how closer we want to resemble to the image. So what I'm going to do is copy this line that we have it right here and I'm going to paste this below. Next, what I want to do is tell Mid Journey how much of the image I want to affect, how weight of the image, importance of the image. So for this, we'll go to type space, dash, dash, IW, and this is stands for image weight. And then next, usually you type any image weight, and it can be from 0 0.1 up to 2. But I will utilize another options because I want to see how the all image weights will affect. I'm going open curly bright brace and type 0 0.1. This is the lowest image weight can be comma. We'll type 0 0.5 comma 1 comma 1.5 comma 2. So what is happening here? I'll tell me journey render same things for me but render first time with image weight 0.1, next time 0.5, next with image weight one, it's what we have right here, by default it's one, next 1.5 and two. So it just will give me five different options and I can see how much image weight is important to be my portrait closer to what I wanted. So let's go ahead, press enter, and you'll notice right here, it should come and ask if I want to. The process five, right here says, you imagine you have five prompts on your template. Let's go ahead and click yes. So it will start processing five jobs. And this time you'll notice it is three started because I am on a standard. And 
to more in the queue. So I will go ahead and wait slightly um, till it's all completed and we'll go and review them. Okay, render completed. Let's view our result. The first we're going with is 0.1. It's uh, the lowest and you can see it is hardly resemble at all. Only we know it is the female with uh, portraits about half body up to waist and also take us rock cover red dress so but it does not even come closer to our original portraits if we're going and step to 0 0.5 this is a little bit better because we have some poses a little bit closer resemble but again the portrait face not even close to what we have in original when we're going with weight one you'll notice now we start having glasses because to recognize some of the image little bit more closer to what we have it in the original but it's still a little bit away from what we wanted and when we cross this one point uh, weight one now it's definitely image more influence so right here we can see definitely number one facial it's very close and so is the number three actually they're all somewhat closer except number two a little bit more far away but general they are much closer i will say almost is working for as a portrait based on this face and when we're using the maximum two you can see this is very close our portraits resemble very well the problem is when we're using number two for example as the weights weighted two then we start having more heavy influence of the portraits for of the image for example right here even we specify a red dress we does have a red outfit but it's also have a green outfit it does try to compensate with putting like red background but it is image weight it's more heavier so you have less flexibility and this is where you come with fine tuning how well you will go um, how much details you want to keep it and how much details you want to lose but again this is just our start point because we're going to work on this and add a little bit more so till we jump on another things let me point like for example right here we have a 0.1 image and in some cases it's hard to see why do you want to use the image in this case but um, let me give you one of the very good example notice we have a health body shot and female so it does reference poses and everything example right here i have an image full body shot and for example i want to create the image with a full body of the girl dancing or other things in this case for my ai this is will be reference it's what i want i want full body shot and i know some uh, people was asking me how you can create a full body shot because it's a cut off maybe a feet or other things so this is way to do it so let's go ahead and i will say copy image address for this and we're going to imagine we'll paste this image next let's go say rococo style so we'll just describe what we wanted here and remember what we wanted we want er two by three just on this portraits and we want image weight 0 0.1 okay so in right here render we can look and notice this is 0 0.1 we have a full body almost shot also position of the hands and this is the lowest effect of the image and we can expand more we can increase more weights for example right here a bit higher and you can see we start having better resemble as well a little bit the leak of the light and of course the more we're going the better it is um, influence of the image so you don't necessarily need to have it all have influence if you don't really worried about the facial expressions but this is also will provide you additional options to create for example let's say i'm going here and i like uh, some of the style let's go with this one so i will like this image and i'm going to upscale this and now i want to use it to actually blend these images and we come to another step of our techniques blending images 
In blending images, we can take two different images and combine them together. Let AI decide for this. So this is what's kind of relatively new at to Midjourney, but it does help us to create portraits. But if we want to work with the portraits here, we need to pay attention to kind of tricky situations. So for example, let me show you. And we're going to use the blend for this mod. It will ask for several images. You can go up to, I think, six images. When it's selection, we need to go drag and drop or click and upload our images. And I'm just going to select two of those images. We have it and let's press enter. And now if we look on our blending result, it does not resemble to our original portraits because it took two images and combine them together. We do have a girl with wearing glasses, like in three, but the facial somewhat resemble, but again, the hair and other things is definitely took from the other image. What I found out it's better on a blending mode work if you have just the portraits and separate different background. So here is example, let's do two different images. Again, we'll use the blend mode. By the way, you can have it way more if you just select and you can add more images, but we'll just use it two. And we'll have it one as a portrait and another one separate as the backdrop. Notice on our backdrop, we don't have it any person. So AI does not have it any reference to the what person it look. So it's definitely will take only from first one. And now we can just go ahead and press enter so it start processing and after process is finished you can see right here we have it same portraits the person is same as in the portrait and just apply it to this background that we have so it actually does a very good job it my limitations with these um, descriptions because i needed to provide what background i wanted and after merging, which is not bad because you can actually create background inside the mid journey specifically what you wanted and reference later this in your um, blend mode with the portrait you wanted. Again, the portrait that you will blend, notice it still wear green coat. So we or a green sweater. So we need to change this. And another nice options inside the mid journey that we don't necessarily need to use it blend mode. We can also take two images and blend and kind of merging them together. Okay, so here's the example. I have one portraits and I'm going to copy image address on this. We'll go type imagine. We'll paste the first image. We'll go open another image, copy this image address, space, paste this image address, Next, we want to put description in a blending. Again, it's work very good. It's very interesting. But here we can also put a description where they were wanted. And I'm just going and copy this description, including aspect ratio. So we can go ahead and paste in. OK, I think right now we're ready to go ahead and render. OK, so right here, our result. And you notice we do put it together, but we have a problem when this image does not resemble. We can overcome this much easy if we just also apply some weights to this. So for example, right here with image weight two, and you can see we have it quite a bit closer now. We have it our background and we have it our image with the model. So this way we actually can work. But you notice the prompt, it's have a big portion playing in what we're creating. Inside the mid journeys have one excellent options to help us see what is on our image to work on our prompt. And this is well describe. So let's go ahead, set describe. And now notice we have it one image that we need to upload to let mid journey analyze this. And I'm going to use the image of our model and we'll go press enter. Notice as a description, it's given us information. The reason is why I am like to use a description. One, it's provide for us information. It's how the mid journey seeing the specific portrait. So if we want to have it something closer, it will respond. As well, we have it our aspect ratio here. 
So let's have just example. I'm copying just only the prompt, first prompt. And by the way, you have four different prompts, and they notice going from more accurate to more kind of uh, flexible. But you can try either. And if we just type this prompt and give it to us and process, let's see how closer it may get to our description of the image we have it. Notice we don't put any image reference inside. It's just purely the description. And right here we have it from our description. So now we can go and actually utilize both of them, description and text. So let me go ahead right there. We'll click on our image, copy image address. We'll go down below. Let's go click imagine. We'll paste our um, text. Next, I'm going to copy the prompt. We have it. And we'll paste the prompt as well here. So this time, uh, we should have it, our image in the very close to the prompt. We could actually just even say image weight 1.5 to be sure we have it as close as is possible between image uploading, description, prompt, and also weight on the image. Okay, so right here we have our image and you can see the facial is example very close. I mean, the poses, everything. This is in a way we can now modify. So what I like to do, we'll go copy of this prompt, including our the image reference. We'll go to type imagine. We can paste here and inside the string, I can modify. For example, wearing glass, grass, and let's switch cyberpunk, turtleneck, in a style of the festive, or let's go ahead. Again, cyberpunk, we'll just cyberpunk as much as we can. Okay, you'll notice we have it, all this information. Don't like hip hop style. Let's go put it cyberpunk, but I think. Uh, it should get message. I already three times put it cyberpunk because hopefully it is there. So now we can modify and we'll see what is come up. Again, 1.5, that should work fine. And right here we have our image. It's much different style. I like it, but look at this. It's facial very close on our portrait. And remember we did before we done some images overlay end it with us <laughs> like cyberpunk we can do this as well here for example if i like this i can go upscale my image that i like it and we can merge that with another image as well to apply even extra steps and so in this case we can go ahead let's go type imagine okay and we're going to take our image that we used before this one we'll copy this image again we'll take our source let's go paste our source here and now we'll take this image they're creating we can copy this image address we'll paste here and we'll take now this line that we have copy and we can paste so what we've done with this, we say utilize these two images, but even more important, put it on an image. So we get our portraits even closer, but we still have it keeping all changes that we wanted. So and let's just in case per woman wearing glasses. Cyberpunk outfit and style of the rain. So I'm changing slightly. We can do this one. And maybe, you know what, let's go just put it for fun. Red outfit, we'll see what it's come up with. Okay, and right here we have our combination. Notice how it's a replaced background. The portraits are right that this one, for example, look very good, very close, except we have broke a little bit on our hands. This one also look very nice. So you notice how we start adding more and more layering to create the portrait. So now we'll look on these different techniques. Let's take them together and put it and create the portraits of the um, model 
in different environments we want it. So right here first, remember we'll start with uploading our image. And I uploaded two different, I also uploaded background, what we're going to use. So right here is our original image. Next step, what I want as preparation step, actually I want to go describe, okay? And as describe, we're going to select same image. So we receive the descriptions of the image that we currently have. After this, we're going to start combining. First, we'll go type imagine. And we'll take a portrait of the woman that we want, uh, copy, so copy address. We go paste this address inside. Next, we're going to take their descriptions, copy and paste. And sometimes description change, for example, right here, somehow they figure out it's a Soviet, kind of very fun for me. But I want to change some of the stuff. For example, a young woman wearing glasses and elegant sweater, so we'll leave it this. But maybe in elegant sweater, we switch to elegant red raincoat so we'll just switch a little bit here in the style of emerald and bronze this is actually our background we can switch this to the coloring they wanted but i think let's leave it right here maybe you know in of cyberpunk because i'm going to so i'm going to use Cross-processing, mini t-shirt, it's neon lighting. We'll leave this, Feast of Amster. And instead, Christmas punk. I don't know what Christmas punk. We have it, cyberpunk, okay? And instead, Soviet, let's go to retro. So when we're done with this, also, we'll set our image weight. And again, for the image weight, I'm not sure which one I'm going. So I'm going 1.2. 1.5 and 2 so we're going to see on three different ways and usually I do this just to be sure I have it right uh, selection because sometimes it's very hard to say and it's easy doing one pass to see what you have it okay let's go ahead press enter on this and yes I do want to have it three different versions okay so right here is render let's preview this is our number two and you can see we have it green let's go down and find right ones. This is a little bit better rain. Oh, I like the rain code. This is actually look very close. And most important, our portraits is getting quite a bit closer in this case. Next, it's kind of important. You need to select one that you like and resembles. I'm going with this red one, number two. We go upscale that. And we're going to actually merge a couple more times. So I'm going to take copy of this cyberpunk kind of background so i'm going to put that one here and next i'm just take from this and copy all the way up to here space and paste it so this should help us to kind of create more interesting type of the backdrop so what i did right here by accidentally i grabbed the original image it's not what i wanted so let's go ahead again copy this image right here we copy that one Okay, so we go to paste. We have the background. I want to actually copy this. So I need to go copy this image address. Okay, we'll go paste here. And then I want to actually copy this string because otherwise I just copy original image that I don't need it. Okay, right here and let's render. Well, just in case as the, this one process, we also will see what's happening if we just have the original image and Okay, so right here our image is completed. This is one that did it with the first. It's actually kind of interesting, except the face does not necessarily look very good. And this is another. The problem when we start merging with another background, we start losing a little bit more of the originality. Uh, well, original faces. And what's happening, we can always emphasize a little bit more. For example, if I like this background and image and everything, we can kind of blend more and more with original photo. So again, example, we go take again this first one, we copy image that we already have it. And now we have it like another process. So it's almost you developing and you overlay over and over with the different images as you need it. So again, we'll copy this one. Now I'm going to take and copy this image. Remember, it's have it background but it's also have a little bit closer with what I wanted 
and we're going to copy this path and paste in here. So let's go ahead. This is will be our another path. So we have it. Let's look what we have so far. We have our original path with portrait. After we select portraits, we have it path with portraits and background. And now, because it's already rendered, we have it path of the merge background with render portrait with our original. And here we have it, our render. And if you look, this is very nice. This is one resemble very good our original photos. Some little bit different, and it's possibly a lighting. But if you go position of the head, nose, and eyes, it does work actually very very good. So let me upscale those two ones. And here's our render. I say this is actually resemble. This is resemble very good. And notice we change everything. We just keep it only face and put it in different environment, different lighting. Thank you for watching this video.